in our experimental mathematics seminar is a renowned experimental mathematician, Professor Doron Salberger from Rutgers University, who will speak about a case study in experimental yet fully rigorous mathematics, the asymptotic independence of the two main permutation statistics. This is joint work with uh, Andrew Baxter, soon to be Dr. Baxter, uh, hopefully uh, by April or May. Yeah. And it's all joint work. However, the opinions expressed in this talk are solely my own. And, and you may are going to express opinions? <laughs> <laughs> and may not uh, be shared, by, may or may not be shared by uh, Mr. Baxter. True or false? Mathematics is a deductive science. What do you say? False. It is an empirical science. At least it soon will be a completely empirical science. So that's the first thing I want to emphasize. Another hang up old wife tale, a uh, prejudice, uh, superstition of mathematicians is that you cannot, you can't generalize from finitely many cases. You can always do this. If you check it, to, for sufficiently many cases, you can prove the things completely rigorously, not just empirically. For some things, it's not yet known whether you, how many cases you have to check to make it clear. But for, ma for many other classes of theorems, it's already known uh, for how many cases do you have to check it to make it completely rigorous. Not just a conjecture, but a rigorous proof by checking finally many cases. And I give a few examples in which it's already known, but not well known enough, and other cases for which it is not yet known, but soon it will be known. The other prejudice, conventional wisdom, is that a mathematical article has to be boring. It cannot be entertaining. If you try to write a mathematical article that is fun to read, the probability of it being accepted to a reputable journal is very, very low. As soon as the referee will see, here is something fun to read, it could not be serious mathematics. So, uh, and then once it gets turned off by the fun part, uh, it's already completely turned off and you cannot concentrate and cannot check. Mathematics has to be boring in order to be correct. That's another prejudice that I'd like to take issue with. And I'd like to also thank somebody for inspiring this talk. I'd like to thank the editors of the Proceedings of the American Mathematical Society for rejecting a beautiful masterpiece by uh, Andrew Baxter and myself and they got rejected by a referee who did not understand the paper because he did not understand these points. Since very, very immorally today we have this very immoral institution of anonymous referee, which I completely disagree with. A paper is either new or correct, interesting or not interesting, but if it is, you should have the courage to say it. Whenever I reject a paper by someone, I always refer a paper on condition that I will not be anonymous. So sometimes I get a request for referring and the editor, I tell the editor, I'd be glad to refer it on condition that I will not be anonymous. But the stupid editor, uh, of course, read very fast and he assumes that I ask to be anonymous. <laughs> and then he writes me back. 
of course you be anonymous. Uh, don't worry, I'm not giving you identity to the author. You can uh, speak your mind up, you can trash the computer the author, you don't have to worry. So I had to write back, no, no, Mr. Editor, you completely misunderstood it. If I will reject the paper, I send a copy, a carbon copy, to the editor telling him exactly, how, him or her, why this paper is not worth publishing. For three reasons. A is false, uh, and or it's, uh, uh, it's not new, and or it's not interesting. Uh, so, uh, but anonymous referring should also. Also, anonymous referring is done by nowadays in scholarly journals by one or at most two referees. The jury is asked for two very busy people who are anonymous. Since they are anonymous, they are not accountable. They can do a lousy job. And there are lots, quite a few examples, that people detected even in very prestigious quote-unquote journals. For example, Annals of Mathematics, there is a fellow called Daniel Biss, who was a superstar. He proved lots of interesting problems in very pretentious journals. The Annals of Mathematics, uh, the Annals of Mathematics, then one day, somebody found a very serious error, an unfixable gap, and his five papers uh, were completely wrong, 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 wrong. And he tried to fix them up for four years, and the editors of the Annals of Mathematics, because the editor was his PhD advisor, he gave him four years. Uh, to fix it before he had to retract it. So it took them four years for a human generated paper. So this is, I believe that scholarly publication is very unreliable. Often it's minor mistakes, but also not as, uh, also quite, uh, uh, quite often you have serious mistakes. That because it's anonymous referees, if you had a paper referees by so and so, he would, he or she would be accountable and will do a good job uh, to at least test that it's correct. So, th so the current system is really obsolete. It's a takeoff from the paper era. A long time ago, paper was expensive. You had to mail it. You cannot read everything, and so it was uh, something. Uh, okay, they had some uh, point. Uh, scholarly journal to screen out was interesting. You get in the mail, a uh, journal, you cannot read everything. So yeah. But nowadays, we have the internet. You can just Google everything. You have the archive. Grisha Perlman, he doesn't publish in the Annals of Mathematics. He only publishes in the archives. If you want to check, go ahead. You're welcome to check it. He gives as many details as he cares for. He doesn't uh, go with referees. Unfortunately, uh, not everybody is Grisha Perlman, and uh, we lesser mortals uh, have to convince people. So for lesser mortals, I have instituted a new system. I am the editor. The author is the editor. And the author invites people who he knows are experts, and they also can decide who's the expert much more than the editor. The editor doesn't know who's the expert exactly. So he takes at random uh, somebody, uh, I don't know how to do it, uh, but they also should decide, and in this rejected paper, a beautiful masterpiece, uh, that just got rejected by the proceedings of the American Mathematical Society, with a beautiful, beautiful title, a little bit long, the number, of inversions da 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 normal that enough <laughs> by Andrew Baxter and Desabago. This paper has been stupidly rejected by the editors of the proceedings of the American Mathematical Society because the editor sent it to a stupid referee who missed completely the whole point of the paper. So the reason for this talk, since it's being videotaped, is a public rebuttal and hopefully the referee can watch and find out his or her mistakes. In defense of the referee, the style of this paper is so different than the usual style of papers, so it could have easily been misunderstood unless somebody is 
really broad minded. So it's possible to be misunderstood. And I think the main reason why the referee did not like it, it was fun to read. And he called it a 